Thanks, Nick. Well, thank you very much, Mick, for that uh, generous uh, introduction. And I want to thank you and Renee Heath and everyone else here at the University of Portland who brought me here. It's really a, a pleasure to be here, uh, both at this university and in this city. And uh, tonight what I want to do, if it's OK, is give a talk that you will be the really the first people to hear. And you know, usually if you think you get someone gives a talk, they package up something they've been giving 75 times before. But we're in very unique times right now in the United States. Uh, the economic meltdown, uh, the depression, frankly, that we're in now, uh, looks to be the defining moment of all um, our lives. And I suspect for the students at the University of Portland, the period we're entering right now will pretty much define your lives, much like the Great Depression or World War II defined your great-grandparents or grandparents' lives or my parents' lives. Uh, that's the type of moment we're in. And in the middle of this crisis we're in, both political and economic, um, there's a crisis right now in journalism that's part of it that is every bit as important um, as the crisis of the economy. They go hand in hand, but they're distinct, and it's every bit as important. So what I want to do tonight is talk about that crisis, how to understand it, and what we can and must do uh, in the coming months and years uh, to address it and the peril we face if we do not, and the peril is severe. First of all, and I think many of you are familiar with this, we're in the midst right now of extraordinary uh, cutbacks in journalism, in traditional journalism as we know it. Uh, in the past year, roughly 16,000 journalists, paid journalists, working journalists in the United States with daily newspapers have lost their jobs. We're down to roughly 50,000 today. Uh, to 60,000, excuse me, and it's expected that we'll lose at least that many, if not more, this year. Um, the number of people who are paid to do journalism today in the United States, or by the end of this year, to even be more graphic, who are paid to do journalism by the end of this year in the United States will be a small fraction of the number 25 or 30 years ago. But our population has increased, the amount of news that we need uh, has increased. Uh, it's a severe problem. Newspapers, daily newspapers are closing down. It's almost a daily occurrence to see something in the news now about a newspaper that's considering closing or cutting back. Uh, again, this is unprecedented in American history. We've never been in a situation with newspapers closing routinely uh, where we're going to have areas in our country with no working journalists covering them any longer. Uh, communities are voting on public office where there'll be no political information upon which citizens will be able to vote. As bad as the closings are, as bad as the layoffs are of journalists uh, at newspapers that are closing, are just that those newspapers that are attempting to survive, those newsrooms that are attempting to survive, to do so are following the logic of cutting back, uh, reducing the number of workers they have, closing down bureaus, uh, so that what they have to offer is hardly attractive and shedding readers uh, who are for understandably saying, why should I pay money to read what exists in this newspaper? It's really sort of the funeral march or death dance of daily newspapers. Now, were this just an issue about daily newspapers that I was talking about, their decline and possible demise in the next year or two, with the, uh, or, or severe retrenchment in the next year or two, that wouldn't be too severe of a crisis necessarily. Regrettably, though, we aren't just talking about daily newspapers, we're talking about the entirety of journalism as we know it in the United States. And let me just go through that. There was once a time, and anyone under the age of 40 will find this surprising news, that we had radio journalism in the United States on commercial radio that no longer exists. In the early 1970s, for example, if you were to go into a city like Washington, D.C., or any city of that size, any of the 20 largest cities in the United States, there probably would have been two dozen full-time working radio journalists just covering that community. That was standard issue, just radio. So if the mayor did something, if there was some big breaking story, two dozen radio journalists would be over there covering it, just in radio. Well, wipe them out, get the eraser out. They're all gone. There's no more commercial newscasting to speak of in this country on radio. Television news. You know, local television news now, like you just say that, it's like a joke. People start laughing. You don't have to say anything more. Uh, in this country today, you know, we're such a diverse country, there's so much, you know, there's all, the, there's people from so many different cultures and backgrounds, so many different interests. Uh, the one thing I found that unites all Americans, no matter where they're from, what their background is, everyone thinks their local TV news is the worst in the country. 
It's sort of our unifying thread nowadays in the United States. Uh, as for cable TV news or broadcast news at the national level, there's very little journalism there too. It's mostly punditry, uh, people pontificating, oftentimes pointlessly uh, reinforcing the conventional wisdom and offering much heat, very little light. So there's not much journalism there too. And on television, when you do get journalism on it, it's usually when they bring a print journalist on to talk about some story the print journalist has done and report on it and give some insight. So with newspapers go, there's not anything at radio or television to compensate or make it up. Newspapers are really the main game. And then there's, of course, the internet. And the internet, of course, is the future of all media. We know that, we're in that process now. But at present, there's no indication that at this point in time, the internet is poised to replace um, what we're losing and provide sufficient journalism. Uh, most of the stories that are linked to come from print originally. When those journalists stop collecting paychecks, those stories will stop being written, they'll stop being posted online. I love Wikipedia, I love the blogosphere. My wife thinks my head's been grafted onto a computer screen. Uh, but I have no illusions that that alone will not replace journalism. Uh, for social networking, for the internet to reach its promise of citizens' journalism, it has to work with a viable, strong journalism. It can't replace it. It has to have it as the basis for it to really help us improve and enhance uh, our political culture. And it's not doing it yet. The efforts of old media, of newspapers to move to the internet, have been a process of trading old media dollars for new media pennies. It simply hasn't cut it. And there's no reason to think it will in the foreseeable future. So we're entering, as I said, uncharted waters, dangerous waters. Literally, we could be down to just a handful of journalists uh, in community after community in large parts of the country with no working journalists whatsoever. Uh, huge state government with hardly any journalists covering it. Already we're down in most states where there used to be dozens of journalists covering the state house, just a handful are now covering it. Uh, with much more news going on, uh, nonetheless fewer journalists. It's a deeply troubling time and really the only people who can benefit by this frankly, are corrupt politicians and the interests they serve. They're the only ones who benefit by operating entirely in the dark. For the rest of us, it's an absolute nightmare. And I, I, I'll stop here, I could do an entire talk on just what the dimensions of the nightmare would be if we lose all journalism. Uh, but just trust me, it's bad news. If you, the more you think about it, the more depressing it becomes. Now, this is not an original statement I'm making. If you've been reading Time Magazine, The New Republic, The Los Angeles Times, uh, any of our major news media journals of opinion over the last three months, this is a recurring theme, writer after writer commenting upon the collapse of journalism, the decline of resources, the problems it causes. And there are two reasons that are generally given for why this is taking place today, two explanations. First is the internet. The internet is blamed because it's taken away advertising dollars from newspapers and it's taking away young people who would rather surf the web than buy a newspaper and read it. So the internet's bad guy number one, Bad guy number two is the depression uh, that has basically speared debt-laden media corporations and made it almost impossible for them to survive. So even newspaper firms that the operating expenses of their newspapers are still in the black or close to the black are paying such enormous amounts of debt that they're going to go under. They can't sustain even semi-profitable operations. So between the internet and the depression, we're told, um, that accounts for the crisis. 